Good evening. Welcome to North Beat. I'm Megan Roberts. It's been a tough day across the Northwest Territories. Thousands from the South Slave region are still out of their homes, and people in Yellowknife are wondering if they'll soon be out of theirs. Wildfires still threaten multiple communities in the territory, including the capital. For the latest on the situation in Yellowknife, we've reached the city's mayor, Rebecca Alti. Thank you so much for joining me again today. I just wanted to start by asking you, will there be an evacuation order issued for any parts of Yellowknife tonight? We will be having an update with the territorial government at 7 p.m. So myself, the premier and the minister of uh, MACA. And so there'll be more information coming. But uh, for now, the evacuation alert is in place. And so just reminding residents to uh, the evacuation alert for the west side of the community to, to be prepared. And so that means having a bag ready with your medications, anything valuable you'd want to take. Um, if you have the opportunity with your vehicle to fill up. Um, and for the rest of the residents, you know, I'm sure um, they're also anxious. And uh, I know a lot of folks have already started uh, preemptively leaving and so also encourage residents to to take those precautionary measures and and to have a bag ready if need be but we will provide more of an update on um, work that's been underway today as well as work that's going to come in the coming days because there was outside of the evacuation uh, alerts um, continuing a lot of work today on the fire breaks which again is basically clear cutting trees 100 meters wide to be that buffer between the fire and the community. And the territorial government was also dropping a fire retardant line. And so that would be the first line of defense with our fire breaks, the second line, so and sprinklers as well. So a number of, or a lot of proactive measures to, to combat this fire. Okay, I, I know there's an update coming at 7 p.m. tonight, Mountain Time. We'll have that live on CBC Radio 1 as well as on our website. I just, there's been a lot of confusion from people in the city of Yellowknife today. As you mentioned, a lot of people are leaving. Can you say definitively whether there will be an order coming tonight? People are really questioning what's happening. Yeah. No, I just encourage folks to to tune in at 7 p.m. We'll provide a full update on work that's been underway today, as well as work that's going to come in the coming days. And again, um, folks want to prepare. That's always uh, a recommendation. So again, you know, the alerts in for one part of the community, but by all means, all residents to to be prepared and and have a bag if need have gas if need, have food and water if need. So there's uh, recommendations on the city as well as websites, as well as uh, the federal government and CBC has also done a great story on, on things that you'd want to prepare for. So there has been some information on the city's website today. I just want to know why there's been so little information. Why not hourly updates? We've been getting a lot of feedback from people in Yellowknife that they're really worried and they'd like to have more information and reassurances about what's being done and whether or not they'll have to go. So why so little information today? The staff are working really hard on all of the, the plans and all the mitigation measures. And so I can appreciate that, that folks want that continuous update, um, but we only want to provide information once it's confirmed. And so we're not going to release information when, you know, here's a draft of what we're thinking or, or this or that. So um, we provide information when it's, when it's needed, um, when it's confirmed. And so, can appreciate again, residents wants all the information um, and we release it when the information's available and important to know. And again, I know folks are anxious and, and have that anxiety. And so take some of that energy and do some preparing of, um, you know, I've also seen a lot of people being doing fire smarting work around their property. That's great to see as well. So, you know, take a bit of time during the day, um, be prepared if need be. There are, as we both mentioned already, a lot of people that are leaving by plane and by car. How are you making sure, especially on the highways, that people are able to get out safe right now? 
Yeah, the highways is uh, territorial, but um, so the territorial government has shut it down, as all residents know, whenever the conditions aren't safe. So if the smoke visibility gets to be too much, um, the highways are currently open. And, you know, in talking to some folks who have been leaving, they've said that the, the driving's been good. Um, folks have been really respectful and, you know, being good drivers. Um, so it's been, from everything that I've heard, good conditions on the roads today. Good conditions for the situation, recognizing, you know, most of the time you're not wearing an N95 driving down the highway. Yeah, that's totally fair. Uh, what conversations have you been having with businesses as well, just with regards to groceries, to gas? We've been seeing huge lineups of people trying to get prepared. So are there enough supplies? Have you been talking with businesses to make sure everything is good to go? Yeah, and so now that we're under the territorial state of emergency, there's kind of a, a division of what everybody's doing so that we've got a lot of hands on deck and we want to be able to maximize and make sure everybody's covering all the bases. Um, so the, the territorial government through the Department of, Department of ITI would be working on those, um, those components to make sure gas and food um, but for, for now, we hear all that's in good order. And if anything were to change, we'd communicate with residents. Okay. And you've been in the city for quite some time. You mentioned that yesterday at the press conference. Have you ever seen anything like this happen with this mass exodus of people? No, I know in uh, 2014, there was a lot of folks that left as well. Um, there was lineups to, to get out of the community. So I know um, when we have the, the big forest fires, 98, 2014 now, um, but this is, I'd say, the, the most serious threat we've had um, versus the previous two fires. So again, you know, the city, the territorial government, the federal government, we don't take this lightly. There's so much work underway. Um, it's from the fire breaks to the the work of um, the evacuation plan, if, if need be, um, to the defensive and offensive firefighting. There's so much work and um, it's not just, you know, me in my office making these decisions. It's the subject matter experts with a lot of fire experience that are here to provide advice and, and make great recommendations. Okay, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. Not a problem, thank you. That's Rebecca Alti, the mayor of Yellowknife. Right now, the fire is about 17 kilometers from town. The Yellowknife Betchical Fire, as you just heard, not everyone is waiting for an official order to leave. Natalie Pressman has more on that story. By car and by plane, some Yellowknifers are taking matters into their own hands. Brandon Hancock is among the Yellowknifers who drove out this morning. He says he was already planning on going to Edmonton later this week, but that he wanted to leave early when he knew the highway was still open. And I'm like, you know what, it's, I'm just going to pack up and, and leave in the morning when there's daylight hours and um, hope the road is open and before the winds pick up and stuff because I, I you just don't know what's coming, you know. Hancock says driving towards the flames made for a smoky ride. But about 50 kilometers out of Yellowknife, it started to clear. Others who made the trip describe lots of other cars on the road and lines of vehicles fueling up at Big River Gas Station in Fort Providence. At the Yellowknife Airport, crowds look to evacuate by air. Barbara Wright was just visiting Yellowknife and flying out this morning. Bit surprised with the escalation of the forest fires in this region. When we landed 12, 13 days ago, wasn't much of a concern. And this morning, turned on the CBC, as it turns out, and realized there was a, um, they had orders for potential evacuation. The city said that if areas on alert need to evacuate, they'll go to the multiplex. If it comes to a citywide evacuation, the territorial and federal governments would help with that, though they haven't said what exactly that would look like. Natalie Pressman, CBC News, Yellowknife. You heard Natalie there talk about the Big River service station in Fort Providence. It will be open 24-7 for the next couple of days. Owner Linda Croft says she made the decision to stay open due to the steady stream of traffic coming through the station and also just to let people know there is a place for them to get supplies. Croft says Big River will stay open 24-7 until at least Friday and she says if things continue as they are now, she'll extend the hours even further.
And it wasn't just lines in Fort Providence for gas. In Yellowknife, it's been a mad dash for gas today as well. Cars were lining up down the road, residents filling up their vehicles, filling up their jerry cans amid all the uncertainty. Well, a lot of people are pretty nervous. Uh, just try to get ready and just be able to do what needs to be done, and whether that's evacuate or whatever is happening. Because things are changing pretty quick, so. Some of those filling up say the city hasn't been transparent enough about evacuation plans.